Good afternoon, all. Um, anyone else is coming in? I think that um, it, it, the front seats just go for broke there because if people are late, they can take a seat up the back. Uh, firstly, uh, um, can I first introduce myself and welcome you all here today. Uh, my name is Fiona Cameron. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at Screen Australia. I'm standing in the shoes today of Graham Mason, who regrets to advise that he's unable to attend due to a death in the family. Unfortunately, his father-in-law died yesterday and he's flown to New Zealand, obviously, to be, to be with the family. So, of course, we are all thinking of him and uh, understand his, his absence here today. Um, look, thank you particularly to Maureen Barron. Maureen. Ah, thank you. Right at the front. Um, and, and Laurie Flexer, who I just saw as well, right to, to, to the right, um, whose idea all of this was. So thank you. Thank you, ladies, for coming in and having a chat to us and saying we need... We, Effectively, it was a bit of a we-need-to-talk-about-Kevin moment. Um, Maureen was keen to bring stakeholders together to talk about the single biggest challenge to the sector, attracting a paying audience. Um, Screen Australia, of course, was keen to talk about trends, options and possibilities. And Laurie, with her various hats on, including the IP Awareness Foundation, was keen to shoot home some facts. So here we are. Attracting an audience who value a story. Perhaps the biggest challenge of our time. What happens next? Literally, what happens next? And how much will you pay to find out? Will enough people pay enough money to enable great stories to be told? If this is a problem for Hollywood, and it is, it is a tsunami-sized pile of hazmat for Australian stories. And yet, I, has, I hasten to add, the sky is not falling in. Change is happening anyway as a result of technology, and we do need to promote it and to persuade it rather than resist it. However, one size fits all is not a panacea. There is not a one size to fit all. Stories lend themselves to different channels, and you'll hear more of that from my colleagues who will be introduced in momentarily. There is a future for cinema, there is a future for television, and there is a future for online. Business models will change, and yes, that is frightening if you're currently in an existing business model. But talking about it is a great place to start, and this is a great occasion to do exactly that. From Screen Australia's perspective, there are a few things that are within our power, and there's a hell of a lot that isn't. We're not the problem, thankfully, and we're not the solution, unfortunately. But what we can do, and I wanted to go through the four things that we Screen Australia can do, is facilitate, support, legislate, not directly, but hopefully we can influence it, and of course experiment. Let me expand briefly. Facilitate. Promote discussion and options through avenues just like today. Ask the questions. Bring, to pe bring people together to talk about potential answers and to get like-minded people to agree on possible options. When do shortened windows make more sense? Should it be related to genre, format or budget? Or must it be case by case? We can and do support the development and production of Australian stories across all platforms. Bipartisan political support will always be needed in this space. The economics of screen production in this country necessitate ongoing government funding and regulation if we want to continue seeing Australian stories on Australian screens. In the feature film space, this is as critical as ever. There is no quota safety net for feature films. They are difficult to finance and the subject of rampant piracy. Australian feature films may be a labour of love, but they are also our talent escalator and shop window to the world. Feature films are more difficult than ever, and yet more accessible than ever. Screen Australia can hope to influence Screen Australia can hope to influence the definition of feature film for the purposes of eligibility for the 40% 40, 40 producer offset. Why and how? Well, as I mentioned earlier, we can legislate. At least we can hope to influence legislation. Here I should clarify that the legislation in question is the Income Tax Assessment Act, not a, not a Screen Australia guideline or open, to Australia, or open to Screen Australia discretion, as so many in the industry often write and talk about. 
The Tax Act defines a feature film as a film produced wholly or principally for exhibition to the public in cinemas. That's the legislative definition. Significantly, these films attract a 40% offset, where other films distributed on television or online only attract a 20% offset. In this day and age, we know that this definition is distorting the market. Many films, single episode programs, are made for cinemas when they should be released through different channels. This is exacerbating many of the challenges we all face, and that's just the fact of the matter. Now, we are discussing with the government a more platform-neutral approach to feature film release requirements, which in turn should stimulate foreign investment, remembering that the introduction of the 40% offset for traditional feature films resulted in a 50% increase in foreign investments since the introduction of the film offsets. Finally, we can experiment, try new things, pilot a digital distribution strategy, for example. Screen Australia can afford to put its toes in the water here, take risks, but in a very contained fashion, in an R&D type fashion, if you like. Last week, we announced that we were partnered with C-Pictures as part of our enterprise industry announcement to potentially, potentially release one to two films through a digital distribution pilot scheme. It would have to be the right film with the right audience filter and the right marketing campaign, and of course, with the right value proposition. If we get these ingredients right, we may be able to bridge that gap to audience, or help at least bridge that gap to audience. The value proposition to Screen Australia is eyeballs. Ensuring taxpayer-funded content is seen by the largest possible audience. But there does need to be a value proposition broader than the Screen Australia value proposition. We completely understand, and that's why we are all here today. Rights management and back end are active discussion points. Ending my comments on the value proposition takes me full circle. How do we make it work? How do, we, how do businesses evolve? How do we influence government and win over audiences? How do great Australian stories live to see another day? Stay tuned. On that note, I will now hand over to my colleague, Georgie McLean, who will introduce the panel for this afternoon's session. Cheers.